All right, welcome back to tutorial number six for how to build a web interface for the TR1. Uh, last time we left off at where we built out how to drive with the front end and how to use the arrow keys. One issue that we had was if you hit, well, basically it seemed like uh, the, the, the front end would just kind of freeze up, like there was some sort of stack overflow issue or something like that. Well, I found the solution. Watch this. If you look on the left-hand side of the server, uh, I've hit this drive command I think six times and now I try to keep typing and nothing shows up. What's happened is that the back end is actually not responding, uh, does, doesn't provide a response for the request to the back end, those post requests. So what we have to do is we have to, uh, um, well basically it was just an oversight uh, on my end. Um, so this is the drive command. Because this issue, I didn't notice this issue with anything else. I looked at the front end, didn't notice anything. And I realized that only a few commands were getting sent. So the back end, we have this drive route that we've created. And there's no response at the end of this. So all we have to do is just do response.json uh, uh, joints. Dates. In fact, we'll do that. Um, yeah, that's it. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably all we should do. Uh, well, I'm hesitant. Um, I think we'll just send back an empty object uh, is what we'll do because um, I, I've talked about before in the previous um, in previous videos where oftentimes. In the past, I've built this out to where you respond with the joint state, but you know it's not really that useful. Um, like we we're, we've found a better way to do it going forward, so maybe we'll even just respond with an empty object. I think that's probably the best way. But now we can we can rerun the the server. Um, it must have been something with Chrome that basically only let you send out um, so many requests at a time. And if you send out too many requests, it just freezes and waits for everything to, to come back. So now we can reload. And now I can hit drive a million times, and then nothing actually freezes up. So uh, that was, a again, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, we fixed the entire issue just by adding one line here of code. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's only a handful of characters. So that's how programming goes, my friends. Okay, so uh, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about what we're going to build. I've decided we are going to build the terminal uh, interface. So uh, you'll, you'll notice with this, um, well, if you've seen my older videos, you, you'll see that uh, I've built out like a little terminal section here where you can, like a little command line interface and you can enter commands and uh, you can have instructions and stuff print out there, and we can do all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm gonna dive right into that, because I've got a call in 30 minutes, and I've gotta get on that, but I've also gotta get some videos done, and that is how things go. Okay, so we're gonna have to define a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, there's all kinds of functions that we need to build out. This is this is going to be a little complicated. Um, I would be very surprised if we if we finish this this video. This will probably have to be a two part um, build out here. So we've already got this dot step defined. Um, we're also going to do uh, this dot display. Um, and then. We're gonna have to draw a box in the bottom left. We're gonna have to insert an, like an input section. Um, we're gonna have to handle our arrow keys and key presses so that we add that to the terminal. Um, whenever people press enter, uh, we're gonna have to be able to do something where we can parse different functions that, uh, and, and like the different arguments and check that like the, the, the arguments you know, match what the, the function allows um, so this is this is pretty complicated um, but nothing that we can't do so let's start with just defining our state object up here 
Uh, this dot state equals now do text. Uh, text we're actually going to store as a. Um, let's see, we're going to store uh, as an array. So what this is is just basically the list of commands that have been entered, um, and it'll also make it. We'll add a um, this dot add text. So add text equals function, um, so that you can add a new line to it. Um, so this is going to be what's actually going to be displayed in the terminal. This dot state dot. Um, Well, let's do the width. Whoops. Let's just be width. If any of you guys have worked with React.js before, you will know, you will see lots of inspirations for how I code and how I build these little components that have all been um, pretty heavily influenced by React.js. It's a great front end thing, but it doesn't work well with uh, P5. So P5 wins. I need it too much for this. Canvas height minus 260. OK, what things have I just programmed there? So we're going to have a width of 500 pixels for the terminal. We're going to have a height of 200. And we're going to position this thing. Uh, 20 in the x, so just barely off the left side of the window. And we're also going to position it all the way to the left, or all the way on the bottom of the canvas, but up 260. So there's going to be, I think, 60 pixels of gap between um, the terminal and the terminal in the bottom of the screen. Uh, let's try to figure out how to display this thing. So push push and pop are two different because like so this is where we start getting into kind of the P5 gobbledygook. Um, so we're going to set a background to this to be black, but with 50% um, uh, opacity. Is that how you pronounce that? It's one of those words I've read a billion times, but I don't actually, I've never said it out, out loud. Um, so we're using all these functions to draw things with p5.js. So push and pop basically just says we're creating a new bit of state here. We're going to do these things and then we're going to pop the state. So the state goes away. So whenever we we can we can um, because you know we're drawing rectangles and then there's all kinds of other things where you can rotate and you can set the origin to certain spots and in this way it just it just keeps everything clean so you don't have one section of code that actually accidentally is like interacting with another section of code um, in a way that we would, don't want. Um, so then let's have a stroke over here. Um, do 100, 100, 0 0.5. So I believe this is going to be the outside of the rectangle. And then, so this is where we can do, um, by, by defining everything in state, the nice thing is that like if we need to change stuff, or reposition stuff, we just change these values up here. So that's, that's a big advantage of, of doing it this way. And then other sections of our code can manipulate the state. Um, so it just makes everything so much cleaner. And we don't have to store stuff as like global variables. This.state.position.y, everything's explicit. I mean, come on. What more do you want? This.state.width and this.state.height. OK, let's just, I know it's very easy to get ahead of ourselves here. And I don't want to program the whole thing without testing it for this very reason. OK, so we have, um, we were supposed to have something right. So uh, this dot step, we need to display it. There it is. There's our little terminal window. OK. So um, this is why I love P5, because it's so easy to build out this kind of stuff in a very kind of coordinate manner. Um, it, this would be much more difficult to I don't know, if you wanted to do this all with like actual HTML elements and things like that, it just gets kind of hairy. So P5 uh, is great, makes it very, very easy. So let's 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 just humor me for a second. 
So let's change the width now to 800 instead of um, instead of 500. Um, and actually, we can just reload, and we'll see that the width of this changes. Piece of cake, piece of cake. Um, so that's all we have to do um, by by keeping all that state there. Um, Okay. Let's add our, our input window. Oops. Um, this over here. So uh, here's where we do. It, it, it is advantageous to um, have HTML elements. Um, uh, input. So this is going to be our text input. Uh, we're going to set the position to be this dot state dot position dot x, and then uh, the width. Let's see, oh, this is the y position. Um, so we'll have this be. Uh, yeah, we'll just define this as uh, canvas height minus fifty. Um, so this will be. The, the the pixel the top left coordinate like the origin of the input will be um, 50 pixels from the bottom of the very uh, of the canvas that we're working with so this dot input dot size 500 by 20 um, see the 20 so we want to keep this the same width as um, the terminal so this dot state dot uh, width that easy. We're going to do some styling stuff. Um, this dot input dot style. Let's see. So we want to add a background color of RGBA. So this is going to be white with 70% opacity. Oh man. Um, op opacity? Yeah. Yeah, opacity. Opacity. Opacity, there we go. <laughs> uh, now we know how to say that. OK. Um, so background, uh, we're going to add a little border. This dot input dot style uh, border. And this is going to be one pixel solid with uh, kind of a dark gray color. And this input dot style. And then we'll set the font size to be 14 pixels. Great. So now we need to handle some events. Um, what we'll need to do is if you click in the input box, and in fact, actually, let's just go ahead. Uh, do I need to actually display this? No. I think it should just automatically show up on our window. Let me go ahead and just uh, restart the server for no reason at all. Run that. There we go. Okay, so there's our input window. We can actually type stuff into it. Ah, that's a good example. So I'm typing the keys here, and it's interacting with the world. So what I want to happen is when I type something into the input window, uh, we do not move the head around. Like the robot doesn't move, right? That's that's a problem. You know, I'm pressing up. Uh, you can see that the drive command is showing up in the window or in the, on the server side. So uh, we got to figure out a way to handle all of that. One way to handle it is to um, uh, add functions to on focus and uh, on blur. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is basically just say this dot input dot is focused. I guess we'll do is focused equals true. I bind this. So we'll set, we'll create basically a new variable called is focused. And this is much like what we did with the keys, where we, we just want an easy way to check and see if the if the user is currently selected the um, the input so that on whenever we are on the drive side we can like ignore stuff that's being um, ignored 
in, like any keys that are being pressed, we're not going to accidentally drive or look or something like that. We, that's an easy way to check. So this dot input dot elt dot uh, on blur equals function e this dot input dot is focused equals false. I'll bind this. Okay, so the nice thing is that that is all we need for the text input. Um, let us then, now I'm going to try to figure out where we can um, basically ignore these commands uh, if our input is focused. Yeah. Okay, so, so how we're going to do this is very, very easy. So down here, if you remember, this is our, our handle controls for drive. So all we're going to do here, we, we have down here, if the key, if the space bar is pressed, we're going to stop, okay? And all we're going to do here is that um, if the terminal input dot is focused is true, which that's not even, I don't even need that. So we're just going to say if the terminal input is focused, then we're also going to stop driving. And um, I think we'll do the exact same thing for look. Yeah. Um, in fact, yeah, we've got the same kind of thing down here. Um, so we'll add that uh, to stop look dot pan and tilt. So if the spacebar is pressed or if the terminal input is focused, we should not be looking or driving. And this is a very easy thing to test. We reload. Something's not happy. Key spacebar is not defined. That is fair. Um, copy that and then reload. Okay, so now if I type in A, S, D, or W, it should not move the head around. Great, and now if I click out of it, it does look around. So um, that is a very simple way for how we're going to be able to get in here, type out something, but then whenever you're out, um, whenever, you, whenever the input is not focused, it doesn't move anything around. All right. Um, this is some of the stuff that I, I had to skip over before because it, I could have added that bit of code earlier, but it wouldn't have made any sense. So I'm glad we've remembered to go back and, and add that. Um, okay, so what's next on our terminal thing? So we've got add text. This is, I mean, I, I've explained what this is for. This dot state dot text dot push t, push a t. Um, we haven't implemented that yet. Um, basically, I think what we'll try to build out now is if we have text in, well, maybe maybe we'll do like an event, we'll do the event handlers. So if you press enter, um, yeah. Uh, I think that'll be a good thing to do. Um, boy, our, our, uh, our handle key press function for uh, um, for the terminal is going to be pretty long. <laughs> All right, uh, let's strap yourselves in because this is going to be a fun one. So, enter key is the thirteenth is the key code. Thirteen is the key code. So um, we're only going to do something if this dot input dot is focused. Um, if so I believe key code is a, um, yeah. So if key code equals enter key, uh, please forgive any hammering. Um, they're out there sawing and hammering away today. Um, this error equals, um, Okay, so let's talk about what we're doing first. Um, so, so what we've got is we're, we're going through and we're saying if the enter key is pressed, we're going to add text to our um, terminal 
uh, basically our text state. So that like so you're going to type in something, you press enter, so then something shows up on the on the actual terminal window. So there's two sides of that. We need to add the text to the um, the terminal box so like it actually displays all the text properly and then we also need like the event handling side to where it actually adds the text to that um, to the terminal window so let's see how can we how can we do it I think I might just need to dive into some of this code here and then just kind of go back and explain kind of what we're doing um, later on. Yeah, I think that's probably just the best way. So, um, uh, so we're going to keep track of our command, this.input.value, which is going to be the current value of the input, um, basically the, the text that we've typed into um, the terminal window. Um, if there's actually some uh, yeah, if there's actually something there, then we're going to do this dot state dot commands dot unshift, which I believe adds it to the like the beginning of the list, if I'm if I remember correctly. So we'll need to add command to our state. Um, if there's no command, then we're just going to this dot add text. So this is kind of, you know, I'm just kind of doing this based off of what I know about like terminal and stuff like that. You know, you press enter and you just get this little, you know, you still get this printed out, nothing really happens. Um, so that's kind of how I'm modeling this. Um, We're gonna have a whole function section, right? Where we'll have to uh, keep track of what functions are available and what functions and all the arguments and everything like that. That's gonna get a little more involved than probably what we care to do. Um, like right now, you know, I, I think if we try to tackle all of these problems all at the same time, this is gonna get pretty hairy. So I guess for the time being, we'll just do this dot add text. Um, yeah, so if there's no command, we'll just add text with that right there. Um, and in fact, we can even do like that. Uh, and then this is where we'll have to like actually handle the, um, the, 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 the actual functions, like parsing the text, whether or not it's a function. And if it is, do something with it. Um, so we'll just do that for now. So basically, if you go in, you press enter, it, it's going to add some text to there. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's right. That's right. Uh, and it's also going to add the command. Cool. Easy enough. Easy enough. Um, so now that we've, we're, we're adding that to our state, let's figure out how to actually display the text. Um, so we're going to add that to our this.display section. This is going to involve a lot of uh, for loops. Um, OK. Let's see. No, that's right. OK, so we, we can actually just go down here and do push pop and then we can do fill 255 and then text uh, what's the actual text um, oh that's right that's right okay um, b bear with me here so what we're going to do is we're going to do position.x um, so we're going to we're going to set the position of the um, text box and we're just going to create a text box that's going to go over the rectangle that we've got here so we actually could probably just go ahead and um, copy that out there. And um, so we're going to add text to that box. Um, and then what we'll need to do up here is to actually define T. So we can do um, um, text box height is 12 and then var T equals that. 
Um, so here's where we're going to loop through the actual state text. And we're going to add uh, strings, and we're just going to keep appending strings to this t variable, and then that gets drawn out here. Um, so start index equals zero. Yeah, this all gets a little um, complicated, and it's been a while since I've worked through it. Um, so I don't remember the ins and outs of all of this all that well. Text box height minus one. So I'm just kind of coding it out and just kind of remembering as I go what each of this is doing. I is less than text box height. Text.length plus, oops, length plus one, i plus plus, and then t plus equals n. Okay. And then here's where we actually, or bar i equals, that's right. Okay, I remember what we're doing here. Start index. I'll explain it just a second. I is less than this dot state dot text dot length I plus plus T plus equals this dot state dot text I plus uh, new line. Okay, so what we're doing here, text box height. Um, so we're we're basically seeing how many how much text we can fit in the box window um, and you know if, if it's if the terminal window is only so big um, but we have lots of things stored in our state variable or our text variable in our state then we can only display a certain amount of commands or a certain amount of data or something like that we, we haven't added like a scroll window or anything yet so um, so what we're going to do here is we just loop through and, and we check and we see, first of all, how much can we fit, and then, um, and if we need to start later on down in the in the in the state uh, or in the text array, um, we we will start later, and this is going to just check for that. So um, I think we should be okay to try this out now. Okay, why is not defined. So I put a comma here instead of a period. Okay, so this is test, enter, there we go. All right, um, that's good timing too because we're, we're just out of time here. Um, you can see that there's still text displaying here. So, you know, well, obviously like you press enter and that text should go away, but it's actually displaying things here. So what, we, we'll, what we'll be able to do is yeah, uh, fix that. Um, here, I can actually press. And you can see that the text stops moving up the screen, right? So the, the text here um, doesn't just keep displaying up and up and up. It's only displaying text that can fit within the section. So that's what kind of that complicated bit of code um, right here is doing. It's just saying, you know, how much of, of the text can I actually display? So uh, thanks for watching. This is... Um, I think this was tutorial number seven. So next section, we will finish up um, the terminal uh, part of our uh, window, and we will um, start working on our functions and um, allowing us to actually send commands to the server based on what you've typed in in the terminal window. So that's going to be really cool. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this is great. I, I'm, I'm liking how this is going. It's taking a long time, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. If, uh, if any of you are interested in ordering a TR1, please, please go to slaterobots.com slash TR1. You can click the buy button. Um, I can show you that, in fact. Slaterobots.com. Go to the TR1 section. And I've even added this lovely buy yours button right here. 
uh, so that you can buy yours. You can also click this up here. You can see the price of everything. The TR1, it's uh, you know, it's the most affordable robot of its kind that's ever existed. It's like tens of tens of tens of thousands of dollars cheaper than even the cheapest, even the most affordable uh, robots on the market today. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to make robots affordable. We're trying to make make it so that people like you can have access to programming these kinds of platforms. Uh, that's what we're all about here at Slate Robotics. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Zach, and I'll see you guys next time.